The Republicans are in control of Congress, and through two consecutive midterm elections, they've written a compelling thesis that voters want conservatives in charge. But the most glaring exception to this argument is the nation's biggest, richest, goldenest state, California. You know, the most amazing thing about California is how the Republicans let it totally and completely slip away. There is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't be competitive in many of the races that we're in statewide today. Its bright blue leaders have overwhelming support, and now their reserves are ready to take the field. With Barbara Boxer's announcement that she won't be seeking another term, the U.S. Senate seat from California will be opening up for the first time since 1992. Two years later, Senator Dianne Feinstein is widely expected to vacate her spot also, as will Governor Jerry Brown, who will be forced out by term limits. California has no shortage of rising star Democrats eager to throw themselves into the political melee. Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris, Antonio Villagrosa, and Tom Steyer among them. Late last year, I flew out to my home state just ahead of Election Day to take in the World Series and to get a read on which of these Democrats is ready for the political major leagues. Jerry Brown, what makes that man tick? He has his finger on the pulse of the electorate like very few politicians do these days. Uh, it's so much so the Republicans couldn't even get anybody to run against him. It's been smooth sailing for most of the four years. Jerry Brown is a born seeker of public office, holder of public office. Some people think there's a chance that he might decide to run for president again in 2016. What do you think? I predicted two or three years ago that Jerry Brown has not given up the ghost of the presidency, and I don't think he has. I know, Willie pushes that all the time. No, I, I, I don't think so. He, uh, Jerry has ruled it out. Um, he has zero national fundraising apparatus. He actually talks about, when he's done with this term, and he's termed out now, to come back and run, be mayor of Oakland again, and he would win in a landslide. When I ran for mayor, there was no way, I'm not kidding, when I ran for election, no way I could have sat for five minutes without, I mean, serious police presence okay. being needed. Here it is. Uh, this is pretty relaxing. You wanted to have a big, a much more active role yeah, in the governance of the state. Yeah, he's not. He's not, I get he's not been, he's not. Who needs of, a lieutenant governor getting in their way anyway? He's not, I probably do the same thing. It's fair to say he has not sought an active partnership. Uh, that is n not only fair, I think that's grotesquely understated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we know this is not the job he wanted. No, a job he mocked. He openly mocked yes. before running for it. Yes. Yes. So the job you occupy is essentially worthless. No, I haven't said well, that. I used so language well. similarly, but not that language. <laughs> I bet you wouldn't have advised him to say that the job was uh, basically a do-nothing job. If I had been anywhere close to him, I would have cut his tongue out. <laughs> I, I learned this line from John Kerry. He said, you know, the principal job of a lieutenant governor in this country is to wake up every morning, uh, read the paper, look in the obituaries, and see if the governor's name appears. And if it doesn't, you go back to bed. Do you think the fact that he has been parked in a job that is, by his own admission, his own claim, is not really much of a job for the last four years and then again for the next four years, think that will inhibit him or be a problem for him if he seeks higher office? Not at all. I convinced Gavin Newsom to run for lieutenant governor. You're much too young to take the old guy on. You have no statewide presence yet. You've been in office now for four years, right? Yeah. So what does Lieutenant Governor Chair of the do? State Lands Commission, deal, uh, yeah. Higher Education, UC Board of Regents, CSU Board of Trustees, and Chair Economic Development. So the issues of environment, issues of economic development, higher education. Uh, three places, frankly, where I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. But the job, there's nothing to do. He has a staff of one. He has a budget of a million dollars. Whereas Kamala Harris, she's got, what, 4,000 people working for her she, as, the, as the Attorney General. Kamala Harris. You know her well. She is singularly the best candidate for governor in the state of California. And she is so smart politically that she avoids all missteps. Anyone who goes from being a prosecutor as a DA to being effectively the state's prosecutor, the attorney general, I mean, you get up almost every morning and you get to have your choice of which white horses you want to ride to the rescue on. Right? I mean, it's a great position and a very proven position to run for a higher office from. Particularly when you're in a state like California, where the AG is a national figure on any of these issues that you decide to stand up on. I am always surprised that she doesn't get more national coverage. So part of it is just the fact that she's on the West Coast and a lot of the coverage comes out of the East Coast, right? That's one. But I would you know, certainly agree that if she wanted to be out there in a bigger way, there's no question she could be. She could go back and give speeches in D.C. or New York on a regular basis on a subject matter and get a lot of attention. But that's not who she is, right? She gets up every day and wants to 
do the best job that she can for California. Who's a better political athlete, Gavin Newsom or Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris much more disciplined, uh, much more stick to the message, but not as kind of media friendly as Newsom. He's amazingly good on television. Uh, he pops on television, and it's a great inherent talent that you can't teach. I'm not an ideologue, I'm open argument, interested in evidence, and so I admire good ideas wherever I can find them. Does it bother you that he's the only man in San Francisco who's more handsome than you? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> he appeals to young people. He, uh, you know, he's still has major points in, in the gay community for being out front on uh, same-sex marriage. I've been able to say what I think. I survived the gay marriage uh, controversy early on. It's nice to see the rest of the country beginning to move in a new direction. Every politician who runs for office likes to talk about the fact that they're courageous. Uh, there's very few who actually have something that they could point to. Technology, synthetic biology and genomics merging, additive manufacturing, smart metals, what's happening with artificial intelligence, meaning big data, the internet of everything. The rate and change is unimaginable, and government's on a collision course Does with it the future. Does it ever occur to you that there is absolutely no politician anywhere else that talks the way you talk? I don't know about that. <laughs> they should. They need to lean into this. They both want the same job. How's he that cannot how's beat that, her. How's that going to work? The two of them need to sit down and split it up. One goes for Senate and one goes for governor. Governor or Senator? Governor or Senator? <laughs> which one? If you had to pick, which one would it be? The reality is, is that um, you know, both of those are great jobs. The next generation of people are going to instantaneously become national figures, whichever job that they are in. Got to figure out a get, way to get to her right. She's a, you know, oh, interesting. A, a very I haven't liberal, heard that. liberal African-American woman. He's not going to, you know. I think I'm, so I'm more progressive so here in so he is. many ways, so no, I don't know. Well, yeah, let, me, let me ask the question. Yeah, so, you know, so you got this, you got a pl pl platform here that New Gingrich likes yeah. and other conservatives right. like. It's interesting. You know, so. It's just so how cynical. Much, it's so I, strategic. I, I, I'm not capable of that I kind of strategery. The that's like, that's I, very pragmatic. You think they will not actually end up against each other? No, 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 they won't. The, uh, they share the same consultants. They have the same fundraising base. <clears throat> They're virtually identical on all the issues. I think that he will run for Senate. Newsom, he's more of a you know, big ideas guy. And I think uh, Kamala Harris is gonna run for governor when Jerry's done in four years. What's your relationship like with, with Kamala? Oh, well, we, we, we were friends before we got into politics. Yeah. I've been on five or six vacations with her. Uh, she, really? And I have, literally, oh no, we are very close friends. Yeah. So, so that's gonna tear this city no, apart no, no, when you guys both run city. for governor. The, the chances of us running against each other are about 10%, honestly. Really? Yeah, I'm not, think? everyone else is caught up in this. I'm not convinced of that. Really? There are two Senate seats conceivably coming up yeah. in the next four years, yeah. two to four years in the governor's seat, and you got Hillary Clinton, and I imagine a lot of folks out here in California would look forward to going back to D.C. and yeah. working and supporting her if she wins. So there's a lot of things that can happen.